Hip pain can be frustrating. Figuring out the specific cause of a runner's hip pain can be challenging. Today, I wanna to dive into one specific cause of hip pain, femoral neck stress fractures. This is your femur. The top of your femur attaches to your pelvis. The femoral neck helps connect your pelvis to the rest of your thigh. This area has to deal with a lot of stress when you run, having to deal with three to five times your body weight every time your foot hits the ground. Every time your foot comes down and hits the ground, your femoral neck has to resist the bending force that happens so you can absorb your landing and propel yourself forward. Now, if we zoom in on the femoral neck, we see that there are medial and lateral portions, and this designation is important. The inside and outside portion of your femoral neck have to deal with different types of forces. The inside dealing with more compression or squeezing with the outside dealing with more tension or pulling. You see your femur is being twisted and contorted in all these different directions every time your foot hits the ground. It's amazing that we don't get stress fractures all the time. If we make steady training decisions and progress slowly, our bones will adapt to these forces and get stronger and denser. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. Over time, we can see tiny little micro cracks develop inside your femoral neck and eventually lead to things like pain, swelling, stiffness, tightness, and eventually just not being able to run. Now this specific part of your femur is concerning for stress fractures for one big reason. Wrapping around your femoral neck is what's called your circumflex artery. These arteries go around and into your bone, supplying it with the appropriate nutrients and taking away waste products. If we develop a fracture here and that fracture moves, we can sever that artery, which can cause part of the bone to die. That means we're sending you to a hip surgeon and your days of running are probably done. It's really important that we catch these early because if we do, we can normally manage these conservatively. There's a few key things that we look at when determining if someone needs surgery for a femoral neck stress fracture. This table from Robertson and colleagues helps highlight that. The main things that we are gonna look at is how much that fracture has progressed, specifically is it above 50% of the femoral neck, and is it medial or lateral in nature? When runners start to develop these, they will report a very specific set of symptoms. They'll report that that pain is present in the front of their hip, in their groin, or maybe on the outside of their thigh. That pain will generally get worse with running and other impact related activities, and over time they'll be able to do less and less and less of that. Eventually it often becomes painful to stand, walk, navigate stairs, and generally just be up on your feet. So when a runner starts to report unilateral hip pain that's worse with weight bearing and feels better when they lay down or sit in a chair, our ears need to perk up. There's one important clinical pearl I will consistently see with these injuries. They will often report pain when they take weight off of their affected leg. If someone is dealing with pain in their right hip, they will say, I can squat on my right leg, I can stand on my right leg, and it might not feel comfortable, but I'll get a big increase in symptoms when I go to take weight off that leg. That pain with offloading has pretty consistently correlated with someone having a stress fracture in their hip and the patients that I've seen. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you found this information helpful with your patients and athletes. And make sure to like, subscribe, and comment with any questions below.